Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicles. And by Yamaha Motor Canada. What kind of Yamaha are you? Everyone in the off-road business is talking about the versatility of side-by-side -side vehicles. On this week's episode of Dirt Tracks, we're going to take you somewhere in the new Razor 570 from Polaris. You may not have been before in a side-by-side -side vehicle. We're going to drive on tight and twisty ATV trails. Okay, here's the straight goods on the current crop of performance side-by-sides. They're a blast to ride in wide open spaces or on abandoned roads, but not so much on ATV trails. Here's what the new Razor 570 has shown us more graphically than any other pure sport side-by-side -side has to date. It can be right at home railing tight trails, usually reserved for inherently narrow ATVs. The reason the new 570 is able to navigate ATV trails lies right between the wheels. It's just 50 inches wide. Frankly, I'm getting a little tired of the current crop of pulse-pounding, hyper-powerful pure sport side-by-sides like the Razor 900 XP and the all-new Arctic Cat Wildcat. Okay, it'd be hard to get tired of the kind of power and suspension that those new pure sport side-by-sides produce, but I'll tell you what, it can get frustrating. Riding those pure sports on tight, twisty trails is a real handful. There's more to the 570's prowess on tight trails than just its narrow stance. There's an all-new rear suspension, revised motor placement, and maybe most importantly, a seamless linear band of torque extruding from the all-new ProStar 570 four-valve single overhead cam mill out back. It would be completely accurate to say the new 570 is actually the third Razor iteration as a result of its unique rear suspension. Polaris has taken the best engineering tricks from both the Razor 900 XP, namely its engine placement, and from the Razor 800, its double A-arm rear suspension. Clearly, the future for the Razor platform is the fore-aft engine placement. However, this double A-arm setup on the 570 is unique and offers great ride and suspension quality in a 50-inch stance. So what's the big deal with the new 570? Why are we so taken with this new ride? It's pretty simple, really. We've never had this much fun driving a side-by-side. -side. We're not kidding. The 50-inch stance, combined with tugboat torque from the single-cylinder ProStar, makes navigating ATV trails, formerly the exclusive domain of four-wheelers, so much fun, we can almost leave our sport utility 4x4s back at the ranch. Okay, I know what you're thinking. That plain Jane Razor 570 with ugly steel wheels is gonna outrun my Sportsman 550? Go ahead, keep thinking that, because it's exactly what we had to come to grips with after we railed this thing on trails we had never ridden a side-by-side -side before. For sure, a good four-wheeler is always gonna win a run through the trees. However, this thought might boggle your mind. The 570 Razor is actually faster in the woods than either the 900 XP or the Wildcat. Why? because it fits precisely in the two-track carved out by four-wheelers. Wider, more powerful pure sport side-by-sides get pitched back and forth by deep, narrow two-track and are difficult to keep straight on tight trails. While the Razor 570 is a performance hit, we would like to see some nicer wheels with a little more bling. However, everyone around the Dirt Tracks offices agrees we would not trade these ugly steel wheels for pretty ones if they widened out this capable shredder's stance. From the front end, the 570 is pure razor with its familiar and proven double A-arm IFS. Look closely at the rear and you'll notice there's double A-arms, but not the least bit similar to those used on the 800 razor. This all new rear IRS is built for a 50 inch stance and provides excellent ground clearance and plush bump compliance. There's a full on anti-sway bar here as well. We need to make this clear. The newest ProStar engine from Polaris can perform at a level far above its 570cc displacement. In fact, the 570 can actually outperform the 800 twin in certain situations. In corner-to-corner -corner pulls, the torquey nature of the 570 will leave the 800 twin behind. The new Razor 570 won't knock your eyes out like the XP900. So what? There's a bigger market for a side-by-side -side that's this capable on trails trails previously reserved only for ATVs. 
The safety afforded by a side-by-side -side and the opportunity for people who might not be comfortable on a four-wheeler to access the same great trails and experience God's creation in a way no side-by-side -side has previously been capable of seems mighty attractive to me. You've got to wonder how these guys at Polaris keep knocking the ball out of the park in the side-by-side -side business. This latest Razor variant offers trail-friendly, safe, high-performance side-by-side riding to a whole new group of potential buyers. Take our advice if you're thinking like we did, that a side-by-side -side might limit your trail fun or your trail access. Let the Razor 570 prove you wrong. Each year, the staff from Dirt Tracks TV travel countless miles across the North American continent going to new model introductions. And for 2013, Can-Am has brought us out to Vancouver Island to show us what they have for this new season. Vancouver Island is located off the west coast of Canada and can only be accessed via ferry or small plane. It's roughly 300 miles long and 50 miles wide and boasts some of the most beautiful scenery in all of North America, not to mention some amazing ATV trails and MX facilities. For 2013, there's a lot of integration and new innovation from Can-Am, but the sport version and four-seater of the Commander that we all expected to see are not here, but we have been assured they will be in the very near future. Some of the biggest news comes by way of the all-new Outlander Max in the G2 platform. Available in a myriad of trim levels, the Max has made the transition and delivers the same great features we love on the G2 geometric contact control, and any kickback front end geometry. Along with this, a new ergonomic rear seat that features totally new handholds, which remove with the rear seat when you want to go from two-up touring to shredding your local trails with the boys. With the most diverse two-up class in the business, Can-Am does have a Max that'll suit your riding style and needs, all of them in the G2 platform, right from the 500 all the way up to the power-pleasing 1000cc Rotax. At the top of the class, the Max Limited is the cream of the crop, featuring the 976cc power plant, a white pearl paint option, and a Garmin Montana 650 touchscreen display, you've got the most luxury two-upper in the business, and with features like Fox ACS six-way adjustable air suspension, premium mud protection, and softer comfort grips, you'll be more comfortable than ever. This is ATV touring at its best. On the complete other end of the spectrum, the DS450 XMX has received a suspension treatment that rivals all other competition for 2013. Can-Am is truly delivering a race-ready ATV with proven technology. What do I mean by proven? Willwood brake system, ITP quad cross tires with T9 rims, aluminum nerf bars, adjustable width axle, caster and camber adjustable front end, and an Alltech aluminum frame spell it out pretty clear. But the real step up for 2013 is all about suspension, where Can-Am has gone over and above what anyone could have expected, delivering the 2013 XMX with Fox Float Evol X front shocks and a Fox Podium remote reservoir shock in the rear. The same suspension package that's been winning championships for Can-Am MX racers is now available right off your dealer showroom floor. This is completely unheard of in the sport ATV world. The quality of these shocks is simply amazing. High speed and low speed compression, rebound and spring preload adjustments on all three shocks give you an infinite level of adjustability. And when meshed with the incredibly low unsprung weight of the DS450, you are truly given a race ready, race proven package that's not just great looking, but exceptionally smooth and confidence inspiring for the recreational sport rider or competition minded racer alike. Back to the sport utility side, the 1UP Outlander models have also received huge overhauls and are all, except for the 400cc, housed in the G2 platform. And yes, even the 500 now has the G2 dual A-arm front end. No more McPherson struts. This is a huge step for the 500 Outlander as it's always been delivered in a lesser chassis featuring McPherson struts up front. And while I did enjoy the older McPherson strut design, it doesn't hold a candle to the new G2 chassis. 500 buyers are now getting the same exact chassis as their premium big bore brethren and are in for one heck of a ride. I expected the 500's update of the G2 chassis to be the end of the news for the 500 class, but that wasn't the case. Because the new G2 platform required the engine to be slightly manipulated to fit in, there's also been some extra beef added to the 500cc engine. 
The G2 chassis required the integration of the dual room airbox found on last year's 800 and 1000 G2, while it also required the new G2 exhaust design and routing. Through this update, along with mapping changes to account for the new chassis, the 500 mil has 15% more horsepower, now pumping out a stout 46 ponies, a noticeable and welcome increase, which puts the 500 back in the running in the mostly single cylinder torque laden 500 class. The Commander lineup has received one very important and long awaited update, power steering. Now, while power steering doesn't come on all Commanders for 2013, Can-Am has introduced a new trim level on the Commanders that allows power steering to come to the masses at a budget-friendly price. Across the Outlander, Outlander Max, and Commander lineup, a new trim level is available one step above the base model and one step below the XT package. It's called the DPS package, and on the Commander, gives you a very solid upgrade of power steering, 14-inch aluminum rims, 27-inch Maxxis Bighorns, and the Viscolock QE quick-engaging front differential, all for a fraction of the XT package price. Power steering is a huge benefit to the Commander, which has been known since its inception to have a little bit of a heavy steering problem. The DPS system is single-mode design and is always active when the vehicle's turned on. Because the Commander required a solid steering effort in the past, the benefit of power steering is instantly noticeable, allowing you to ride in two- or four-wheel drive single-handedly. Harsh feedback is eliminated due to the dampening effects power steering provides, while the feedback from the steering wheel is still acceptable and doesn't feel too light or likewise too heavy. In my books, the affordable DPS package is a must for all Commander buyers. The last redesigned model I want to show you is one that'll have mud runners pounding down the door of their Can-Am dealers just to get a closer look and drool on it. And that model is the 2013 Outlander XMR in the 59-inch G2 chassis with the 1000cc Rotax. Utilizing the Max wheelbase, the XMR is a mud running monster built to tackle the biggest and baddest mud holes known to man. Factory equipped with an unheard of 30 inch silverback tire, 14 inch ITP aluminum rims, aluminum tapered bars, mud riding foot pegs, power steering, high mounted radiator and air intakes, and the all new front and rear Fox ACS adjustable air suspension that allows you to adjust ride height and plushness on the fly. The mud world has just been turned upside down. With a factory offering that'll rival most custom built mud machines, you can now have it all, including a warranty. With the integration of the SST G2 chassis across the board and an all-new budget-friendly power steering option, Can-Am forges ahead in the ATV and side-by-side -side market, continuing to prove that they're going to build fun and exciting off-road vehicles for years to come. Kawasaki's Terex 4 is not a vehicle you're going to hear a lot about on dirt tracks for one reason. Simply put, we can't get our hands on a press unit long enough to give it a proper shakedown and gather enough data on how it actually performs in the real world. But this season, Kawasaki offered us one of their all-new four-seater Terex 4s and said we could keep it for a few months, which is more than long enough to really put this baby through its paces. So, of course, we agreed. I think the most interesting aspect of the Terex 4 when looking at both the spec sheet and the vehicle itself is that it appears to be a true sport utility crossover vehicle. Why is this interesting? Because until now, there haven't been any real sport utility four-seaters on the market, and we think this should be a very popular class of side-by-side -side vehicle. The first thing I noticed when our test unit finally arrived was just how big the Terex 4 isn't. The two-seater version looks huge compared to its competition, but as a four-seater, it didn't seem to grow quite as much as I expected. The extra space needed for the rear seats is shared between a longer chassis and a smaller cargo box. This results in a vehicle that's not freakishly long, but still has excellent hauling capacity. The wheelbase on the Terex 4 is only 10 inches longer than its two-seater counterpart, and it looks like less when you see the vehicle in person. The extra length is added in the center of the chassis. The front and rear suspension setups are basically the same as the shorter Terex. Double A arms provide a more than adequate 7.4 inches of travel up front and 8.4 inches of travel in the rear. All four corners are damped by a set of excellent remote reservoir piggyback shocks that are fully adjustable and look like units usually reserved only for pure sport side-by-sides. On the trail, the Terex 4 has a decent ride. It's plush on initial compression, but seems to get rapidly stiffer as the suspension strokes further into its travel. 
Because the shocks are so adjustable, it's not hard to tune the ride for either a single driver or four full-size adults, but we found it difficult to pinpoint a shock setting that was good for both. The passenger compartment of the Terex 4 is extremely well appointed and very nicely finished. High back bucket seats, half doors, passenger grab handles, excellent instrumentation and lots of storage spaces make for a very usable interior. But the actual driver ergonomics feel a bit cramped. There's not a lot of leg room for a larger driver and the pedals operate in a very awkward, nearly vertical angle. For working around the yard, it's not a big deal. But if a bigger guy had to spend a whole day in the driver's seat, it could get a little uncomfortable. There are three trim levels in the Terex 4 lineup. The version we're testing today is the mid-level 4x4 that includes power steering. And let me be perfectly clear, power steering is awesome. Nearly zero steering effort and perfectly smooth, precise steering control make the Terex 4 a pleasure to drive. If it was my money and I was buying a Terex 4, I wouldn't even consider the base model without EPS. Under the hood, you'll find the same 749cc single overhead cam four valve EFI mill as in all other Terex models. This throaty V-twin transfers its power to the ground through a fully automatic CVT system and a high low range transmission. If there's one thing we love about this motor, it's the sound. There's no question, a 90 degree V-twin sounds amazing, but to truly impress, you can't just talk the talk you gotta walk the walk as well. And unfortunately, the Terex comes up a bit short in this department. Horsepower numbers are not advertised or listed, but everyone around the office feels it puts out around 40 or so ponies. It's enough power to get the wheels loose on takeoff, but not enough to really throttle it sideways on a fire road. Add to that the 50 mile an hour speed limiter and the excitement level drops substantially when the miles per hour start to climb. That's not to say the Terex 4 isn't fun on the trail. It certainly is, especially when you pack it full of your family and all the related accessories. What makes this side-by-side -side so much fun is its ability to do whatever you want it to do. Where other side-by-sides are limited to either sport or utility uses, the Terex 4 can truly do it all. And it can do it well. Shiftable 4x4 with diff lock, a long wheelbase, and a cargo box make it great for getting the job done. Four seats, adjustable suspension, and power steering make it great for trail riding with a gaggle of friends. So far, the Terex 4 has no direct competition. It's the industry's first true sport utility four-seat side-by-side that does both well. So if an all-round, multi-purpose four-seater is what you're looking for, look no further than the Terex 4. They say two's company and three's a crowd. What's four called? A herd? A flock? Maybe a gaggle? I really don't know. But they also say the more the merrier. And that should be the tagline for today's new crop of four-seater side-by-sides. And new is the key word here. It's only been in the last three to four seasons that recreationally focused four-seaters really came on the scene. And since the first Ranger crew models were released, the class has expanded rapidly. And now, thanks to Kawasaki, you really can have a four-seat side-by-side in any flavor you like. Polaris has the sport and utility ends covered with their Ranger Crew and Razor 4 models, while Kawasaki has that middle ground covered with the new Terex 4. So why are so many people choosing the longer wheelbase and extra bulk of vehicles in this category? Really, what's the point? The answer is quite simple. If you want to take more than two people on a single side-by-side, -side, you can do it one of only two ways. First, you can add an extremely dangerous rear seat to the box of your current two-seater side-by-side, or you can buy a proper four-seater that takes all four passengers into account in its base design. Sure, it's longer, but it's so much more stable and has a full-length roll bar, so it's well worth the trade-offs. And when I say trade-offs, I'm not talking major ones. The only real difference between a four-seater and a two-seater side-by-side is the length of the chassis. And the only time this ever comes into play is when you're trying to cross over taller obstacles. Yes, the vehicle will get hung up or high-centered slightly more often, but for the most part, you're not really taking these types of vehicles, with all your family strapped inside, into the gnarliest terrain anyway, so getting hung up seems to be a pretty minor issue. Which leaves just one conclusion when it comes to four-seaters. 
They're better in every way. They're safer, they're more stable, and they're more comfortable. The trade-offs are inconsequential. So don't put your rear passengers at risk. Buy a proper four-seater. Simple as that. Can't get enough of Dirt Tracks television? Log on to DirtTracksTV.com to watch all your favorite episodes and visit our Facebook page to share your thoughts with other fans of Dirt Tracks. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicles. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat, share our passion.